by posting your comments um, on our YouTube channel, and um, we will try to address those comments and questions. Um, Sister Arlene has been um, assisting us ably over the last few weeks with monitoring those comments and making it known to us who are in the sanctuary today. So I am going to uh, ask of Sister Arlene if she can continue to do so, and I want to thank you very much. Um, for those of us who would like to participate, those of us who are in the sanctuary would like to participate in the lesson study, you can use the mic up front uh, to make your comments. Uh, please remember that if you're using the mic, to speak into the mic so that those online can hear your question and uh, comment. As I said, the study this morning is the rhythm of rest. And before we are going to our study, let us ask the presence of God with us. Oh, Father, we are about to enter into your word, the word that gives us life. And we pray, though, Father, that your word would quicken our souls today, that we would have an opportunity to, to study your word with you. And that your spirit will guide us. We ask, O oh Father, that we will put away all preconceived ideas and notions and be willing to learn from you. Direct in this study, we pray to the O oh Father, in Jesus' name, amen. My two, I have two panelists with me uh, this morning. I've got El Graham. Welcome and good morning. And I've got Sister Carly, you know, our superintendent, with me as we go through the lesson. Uh, the memory text was ably read for us today by one of our members. Thank you very much for that. It says, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Genesis chapter 2, verse is 3, and that's the New King James Version. Um, when I was, um, when I, my wife got pregnant for my first child, I, I, I can recall I was frantically trying before the, the, the delivery date, I was trying to frantically get all the things that was needed for this child coming into the world. I, 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 I tried to get the, the crib. Um, and with that, in Guyana, I needed a net to fit over the crib to prevent mosquitoes from, from getting in and uh, try to pull together the clothing and, and, and whatever else that child might need. So when the child comes into the world, incidentally, it's Oksana, when she came, she would have had all that she needed for survival when she came. Um, I think God did a similar thing for humanity. Before we were created and made, God, maybe not frantically as I was, went around trying to get all the things that was needed for the new children that were going to come into the world. So he created light, of course. We can see the beauty of the light around us. He, he, he created the, the sun and the moon, and um, sometimes we still gaze up at the moon in a more romantic manner, uh, for those of you who can remember that. Um, and the animals, the birds, the fishes, I mean, the great beauty that is around us, the, the water and air and, and, and all of these wonderful things that the human being would need for his survival. So God went around in six days, of, of five, six days, making all of these things before he created the human being to ensure that when those new people come, they will have all that they need, they needed. And, 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 and therefore, I think that the environment was created for the benefit of these new creatures. So the first question we'd like to consider today is, 
How therefore should we as human beings relate to God's creation? How important it is for us to make a contribution to the preservation and, and, uh, of our environment. So that's the first question we like to ponder. How should we relate to our environment? Anyone? I, uh, Remember, it was created for us. Uh, these, these things were created for, 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 for us. Yeah. You know, I, I like that word, the first word of the title of the new, of our lesson for today. It says rhythm. And the word rhythm um, denotes something that works in harmony with, with, these, with, 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 um, with everything that's involved. You know, just like if I were to start banging this table, it might seem random, but um, as I, if my brother starts to knock it as well, and then our sister, you know, we might create a tune together, you know, and it sounds wonderful. And when it comes to relating to nature, it's like a rhythm. You know, everything is created in order to work in harmony with each other. If something goes out of sync, then everything is affected. Uh, and therefore, so when in a question of how do, should we relate to nature, you know, we have a responsibility, we have a debt to God in order to work with nature in all aspects. That's in order to, um, you, know, you know, we have so much um, talk even today about climate change, you know, and the scientists believe that when we work out of harmony with nature, it becomes a destructive force, you know, but that's not something that's new to us. When we work in harmony with nature as God intended, we learn what nature's about, we learn more so what God is about, and it's, um, it works to the benefit of, of our own lives. So we are better off if our environment is taken care of. Uh, we are better off if the animals are better off, if we treat animals better. We are better off if we preserve our forests, and we are better off if we keep our water and air clean. We are better off if we take care of the environment that God prepared. God did just, just prepare this environment. He prepared the environment for us. Prior to creating us, he created the environment for us. So we have got an obligation to protect the environment for our own good. I think as well, if we continue to just hear upon the dear Lord and see everything he did was in order. He, didn't, he, he had it all planned out. Just as how we are with the environment, we need to take pattern from him and, try and look after our environment. And if you look at the way how God took us so special, he did all the preparation before we all came into the world. And as you mentioned with your own um, story with your, you preparing for your daughter, everything that was in, was in place before these things happened. Even when you look at us as men what, that God created, it's, I'm going to speak more about it later on when we get into the lesson, but it's so lovely the way how he think about it, plan for us. And it's the same way with marriages, the same way with homemaking, anything we're going to do, we need to take it in and, and plan it, plan it properly. Yes, so God did uh, have a great plan. Uh, I noticed a comment. Come, come forward, Sister, Sister uh, Douglas. Good morning, everyone. I, I like the example you gave of the... Um, your, the, the bringing your children into the world and the preparation you made for those for your children but uh, what do we have to realize that God's work wasn't finished when he did when he completed the, his sixth day work continues you have to care you have to think of the fit the his physical work may have been finished but there's the other work that has to continue you have to think of the social the educational and the spiritual needs and so one phase leads into another so there's a there's a physical, but there's also the spiritual aspect of... So work doesn't finish at six days. It goes on. And bringing children into the world it doesn't finish by what you lay out at the, at the initial stage, but rather you have to think it's an un, ongoing growth and development. Yes, both of my kids are now in the, um, in the 20s, and the work is still ongoing. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brother Essen... Just 
Speak in the mic, Brother Essen, thanks. I just come up to really ask a question. After I studied the memory verse, it pricked my mind to ask a certain question. And let her ask you the, the, the question to you. We always read and study about creation stories, don't we? All the time we read about creation stories, about our creation stories. The question I want to ask, how many creation that God do? Two and one pre creation, is it right or wrong? We never heard about the first creation. We never heard about the pre creation. We hear about the creation of our creation. Is there a creation before our creation? And is there a pre creation after our creation? That's the question I'm putting to you. And when you answer me, then if you want me to make it plain to you, I will. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. We'll try to answer the question. You want to go further? No, no, no. We'll try to answer the question. Hmm? We will try to answer the question. You want me to answer it? No, I will try to answer the question. Answer yes. So when we talk about creation here, we're talking about creation as it relates to mankind and the earth in which we live. Prior to that, we know that God had other creations. For example... The angels were created by God, weren't they? Uh, we believe that there are unfallen worlds existing that were created also by God. So uh, we are not arguing that the entire physical universe um, and those were created during the six-day creation as we've got it. We are talking about the creation of man, and, and that is a interesting to us. All right, so let us, let us continue. And now, at the end of the six days... You, want, you wanted to know whether there was one, two, three, or four creations... Okay, Brother Essen, thanks a lot. Listen. Thanks a lot. We have heard you. Listen. No, we have heard you. Thanks a lot. Let's carry on. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let us move on, please. All right. If you want um, to sit down anyway, I'll sit down anyway. Yes, but thanks. That, that would be helpful. You're not going to believe it. But it's in the Bible. I'm not telling you where to find it. Okay. Psalm oh. 104. We already thanks thanks a, thanks a lot for your contribution. Now, creation. The, the thing is, after man, after God created the entire environment that we live in—animals, birds, light, moon, stars, and so forth—he didn't complete his creation. He created man on the sixth day. After the sixth day, God did not complete his creation. God went on to create yet another day, which he called the seventh day. If you read the memory text again, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. So after the physical world was completed, God went on and created another period of time. You understand? So the physical world was created. Then God interjected and said, you know what? There is a need for a period of time similar to to the periods of time that I used in my creation, the seventh day creation. He called that the seventh day. Now, incidentally, that first Sabbath was, was not our seventh day. That first Sabbath was our second day. That was our second day. Yeah. We were created on the sixth day, and then the next day... <laughs> God created the, 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 the Sabbath. So God created the Sabbath on our second day, yes. but on his seventh day. And, and 
So, it, it occurred to me that God worked before, um, uh, uh, that God rested after he had worked, but the human beings rested before they started working. Well, so, yeah, go on. Well, are you saying then when they were created on the sixth day and they had the privilege to rest before they work? Because they, they, they rest before they work, yes. yes. And they, what, I also look at it and thinking, what a God. How lovely was this that he created these special beings, human. And then he was so in love with us that he had a day that we could commune with him. He could, we could, he could get to spend more time for us to enjoy nature and have the rest of the world. It was lovely. Yes, it was a honeymoon. It was a honeymoon. <laughs> okay, okay. It was beautiful. All right, God, so because there was a marriage uh, accord <laughs> on the day before, so, so there was this honeymoon on, on, on the side. Oh, yeah. but, but, so there was no labor. Uh, labor was not there when the Sabbath was created. Man had not yet begun to work. No, because so, so one of God to view the Sabbath, therefore, as a gift, not as... Um, okay, not as a reward for labor. The Sabbath was not a reward for labor. The Sabbath was a gift from God to man. Man did not have to labor first, and then he gets his reward of the Sabbath. He gets his reward even before he started to labor. I, I noticed we have a few comments from, the, from YouTube. Oh, go right ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Man didn't work before. Sorry, that man didn't work before they rested on the Sabbath. My question is: When Adam began to name all the animals, etc., was that not his work? Maybe his work is not the way that we work now. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good question. That's a very good question there. I suppose he was still tending the garden as well while he was naming the animals. Is and then, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. There was, there was some. There was some naming going on. Of the animals before Eve was uh, created. So I suppose there might have been some work there. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> but it was easy work. Yes, go on. It's true, actually, because if you think of how lovely life was before sin, I mean, naming the, the, the animals, tending the garden, it was quite nice. Our life was easy. There was celebration. There was honeymoon and everything was happening there. And it was after sin entered the world that we decided to start to labor. We had to labor. So the yeah. rest was a lovely rest. Yes. But remember, the key thing here is that the Sabbath was not necessarily associated with labor. No. It was a gift from God to humanity, and we're going to explore a little bit more about that gift. How significant it is that other forms of, uh, were cre other forms of, of God's creation were made before man, but the Sabbath was made after man. I think, about, I think about a comment that Jesus mentioned in the New Testament, where he was saying, the Sabbath... Man, the, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So it's significant, you think, that every other thing were created before and then this one after. So notice the order. The Sabbath was created for man and not man for the benefit of the Sabbath. Yes. One comes from Uncle Sam McQueen. He said, God did not rest because he was tired. The Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath outlived man. The focus of the last day of creation is rest. Right. Okay. Certainly, God did not rest because he needed rest. Um, um, certainly not. Now, let, let's get into the Sabbath. What, what do you think was the primary purpose of the Sabbath. Now, I want to read Exodus chapter 20. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy 
work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy ser- manservant, nor maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. My question to you is, what was the primary purpose of the Sabbath? I think it was for us to reflect on creation, on God, on the creator, and also the whole act of creation. I mean, it, there's no... You can see the reason why the devil and his devices has tried to discount God's creation. Because if he's enabled to do that, you know, then the whole focus of the Sabbath goes out the, out the window. You know, as our sister said, you know, God wants us to um, focus that he is the creator um, also, which I'm sure you're coming to, he's not just the creator, but the recreator. You know, he regenerates stuff. But if we were to discount the creation, then the whole purpose of the Sabbath is out of sync with humanity. You know, that's why um, it's important that we, we do acknowledge God as creator. So the Sabbath was, uh, was for us to acknowledge that God was creator. I am going to take some comments from you. What, what, what do you think? was the primary purpose of the Sabbath. Yes, you can take some comments, and I'm inviting comments from the congregation too. Okay, there is one from YouTube. Auntie Joy says, um, man was not to kill the Sabbath with work. They were to have the Sabbath for rest, restoration, and worship and fellowship with man and worship to our creator. Okay. Any, 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 any other comments from the congregation? Yes, I think the primary purpose is to be drawn close to God. God wants that relationship with him. So I think the primary focus is to know God and to have that close relationship with him. But also, I like the way that the Bible itemized and defined the Sabbath. Because it's too often, some of us, you know, we, if we have businesses... You know, we allow our people, workers, to continue working while we are on the Sabbath. We're in the church, you know. And where we have, we might have a, a place where we, we have servants. And our servants have to carry on working. The Bible said even the very animals are supposed to rest. Everyone's supposed to rest. So there's no doubt as to the individual, but also whoever is under your responsibility, your sphere of responsibility, you have to make sure that that person, that animal is drawn into the closeness of God as well. Amen. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. I, I just want to pick up on a, a couple of things. And, and, and one, that um, I think that the Sabbath was created to help us to appreciate who the Creator is. I don't think that the primary purpose of the Sabbath was for communion and fellowship. And, and I, I want to make my argument here. Now, if you have a law, that law must identify the primary purpose of the law. If the primary purpose of the law is not identified in the law, the law is useless. Um, when we read the Sabbath commandment, we notice that God gave the reason why he, he, he said that. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. And then he rested. Therefore the Lord blessed and hallowed the seventh day. In this law, God did not talk about communion. He did not talk about fellowship. He did not talk about relationship. He talked about Creation. Now think about this. All of these, uh, these, these two creatures appeared. Look around. Where am I? Who am I? Who created me? Oh, I came here. Why am I here? What's the reason for my existence? 
they must have been amazed and curious as to who they were, where they came from. God now want to emphasize who you are and where you came from. Who was responsible for you being here? I am the person who is responsible for you being here. I am your creator. And throughout the, seventh, the fourth commandment, God is emphasizing the fact that he is the creator. Remember, some people argue that the Sabbath is for communion with God. Yes, for people who have come after sin. But those that peer would have been in constant communion with God. When God finished making them, they were perfect and good. They were in a constant relationship with God, a constant communion with God. Why create a day for communion when you are already in communion with him all the time? To argue that it was for communion is to argue that God anticipated sin and anticipated that there will be a fracture in the relationship, a fracture and a breakdown in the communication. So he needed a Sabbath to replace that. These were sinless people that received the Sabbath, not sinful humanity. You understand? Yes, but, but I still <laughs> think, I still think that when I look at man, the creation of man, I think it was the crowning act of creation. Because when you talk about the whole preparation thing, as well, I think I look at all the stuff that was made before man came into the world. In my mind, I think it was made with, with man in mind. Yes. I think it was made with man in mind. And I think the whole celebration with, and the Sabbath was because God wanted to commune more with man, want to be in a, more relationship. But remember, he was already in that relationship with them. He had, they were sinless. The relationship was not broken. There was always going to be that communication once that sin had not intervened. So he could not have created a, a, a day so that they would have communion when they were always in communion with him. Remember, you are looking at the Sabbath from the perspective of sinful man. But look at the Sabbath was created before man sinned. Okay. No, I think I, there was a comment first. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Now, creation was prepared as a gift. Now, the piece of reading said here, the invitation would continue even after the first couple were exiled from Eden. God wanted to make sure that the invitation could stand the test of time. Now, when you don't know better, you cannot do better. But when you know better, you have to do better. The Sabbath was set aside for holy use. Now, as individuals, we are not forced, but it's the Holy Spirit that brings conversion to your hearts. So when the Holy Spirit brings conversion to your hearts, you become humble. And so when you become humble, you begin to accept Jesus, to fall in love with Jesus. And it's, it's not a problem because you're in love with Jesus and it's like you have a child you love and you're going to do what is right for the child. So it's a commitment. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So remember, I think the primary focus of the Sabbath is to, is to let us know who is the creator. I, I, I think I, I inspired writer Sister White. She, she, she wrote about it in such a wonderful way. She says... That at creation, she, she says that God the Father was the teacher. The garden was a classroom. Adam and Eve were the students, and nature was their lesson book. And through nature, they were to learn of God's wisdom, his power, and his love. And so rightly said, you know, I can imagine them on the first day of creation. No sin. Sorry, on the, their first day. Sorry, their second day. But yes, God. While you watch there. So we can't say that Sabbath is not for communion or fellowship. We come to church to fellowship as brothers and sisters together. So Sabbath is for communion and Sabbath is for service. To do good. Yes, we do good every single day of the week. But it's a day that we rest 
and communion with, with God and fellowship with our families as well. So it's a fellowship day on the Sabbath day. Yes, don't, 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 don't misinterpret that what we are saying. We are talking about the primary purpose of the Sabbath. Yes. Just two, uh, well, there's more than two comments, actually. Um, one of them says, I believe the primary focus, sorry, I believe the primary focus was to look back at all that God had done for me during the week and appreciate God. And then another one, the Sabbath was introduced as a bond in between humans and their father, God. And one more, um, I think the primary purpose is God was teaching us to be grateful. He started out with the Sabbath to give thanks and remember our creator. And then he goes on. Yes, but we must remember the primary purpose of a law must be included in the law. We can infer other things from that law, but what is the main focus of the law must be evident in the law. Now, there was another, when the children of Israel had come out and the, the generation that was in Egypt had died, and this new generation had come up in the wilderness, they were on the borders of Canaan. And Moses felt it necessary to reiterate the Ten Commandments. And as he addressed the fourth commandment, he said, And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out hence through a mighty hand and by a stressed foot arm. Therefore the Lord thy God command you to keep the Sabbath day. In this instant, God did not talk about his creation, that he was creator. It is is, is, is uh, the reason for giving the Sabbath in this Deuteronomy text did not talk about God being creator. It talked that the children of Israel should remember that he brought them out of the land of Egypt. What is the, why the difference here? Why the difference? Why the law, the, the way the law, the Sabbath was written, the reason for the Sabbath differs now than from Exodus chapter 20. Why the difference? I think God was emphasizing the fact that he is their liberator. He, he's brought them from a situation of, of, of bondage, and he's taken them out into, into you know, liberal people. Yes. You know, and and so, so, so the Sabbath, as well as it being a focus of our creation, it's also a focus of our liberation, taken out of a state of bondage or sin and being brought into harmony or sanctification with God. I, 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 I like that. I, I want you to notice that there is a, a type of flexibility and adaptability of the Sabbath that is important. The Sabbath is flexible enough to address the situation and the circumstance that, the, that humanity finds itself. At the institution of the Sabbath, first... The reason was mankind needed to know who created them. This time, God wanted humanity to recognize that he is not only creator after sin, he is also redeemer. He redeemed them out of, from out of bondage. He was the man, he was the person who is responsible for the freedom. And that was important for them to know. You see, God as the Sabbath. Now, Jesus is both our creator and our redeemer. The Sabbath speaks to us about who Jesus is, both creator and redeemer, as in this case. He is the man who is going to rescue us from the state of sin. So when the people sin, the Sabbath was flexible enough to meet their needs. And the need that they need, the thing that they needed to remember was God is the person who delivered us. Remember, think about what happens, and I know the bell went. God will tell the children of Israel, look, you're going to take the promised land. That would be the land of rest, the land of promise. When you get into that land that you would have subdued it, you would have found peace and rest. When you have found peace and rest, what I want you to remember 
Now, they didn't do that because they didn't subdue the land. When you found peace and rest and you're wallowing in it, what do I want you to remember? That that peace and rest that you're enjoying came as a result of my delivering you from bondage and from slavery. So the Sabbath was a reminder when they are resting that God is our deliverer. And that we, as creatures, are delivered by, by him. So the Sabbath is a flexible tool to be used. And more than that, and I think I, are we going to close here, there is more than that to the Sabbath. Remember, in the book of Hebrews, uh, Paul said, they remained there for a rest to the people of God, that he may for he that is entered into his rest, he hath also ceased from his old from his work as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So I wanna I wanna close by saying in Exodus twenty, the Sabbath represented God's creative power. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, the Sabbath represented God's redemptive power. And now, here in Hebrews, the Sabbath is to represent the assurance of salvation. He said, let us therefore enter into that rest. There remain it. A rest for the people of God. For us, Sabbath is an assurance of the certainty of our salvation. That is what Hebrews is telling us. So the Sabbath is flexible and fits the circumstances and the needs of humanity at any time during God's creation. The Sabbath is the most flexible, more adaptive than all the other commandments. And we should be glad that we have the Sabbath. May God bless us all. Our time is up. <laughs>